Now, I don't often make videos like this, opinion videos, where I share my opinion on a subject, and a lot of that's due to the fact that a lot of the adults in this hobby act like eight-year-olds. But every now and then, there is something that I'd like to discuss with you guys and hear your views as well in the comments. So today, we're gonna to be discussing whether YouTubers and people that have large social accounts actually influence and push up the prices of games. Now, there's a short answer to this, and that is, people with influence will influence people. So yes, they do. And then there's the longer argument. And this is the discussion I'd like to have with you. Now, as I see it, yes, YouTubers do push up the price of game collecting and retro gaming, but they're not the main cause. In fact, far from it. I think YouTubers and influencers are actually quite far down the chain. And to help with this, I'm gonna give us something visual to kind of wrap our heads around when we talk about this subject. I want us to think about a stone hitting a puddle of water and then ripples coming out from that. The ripples that are coming out decrease in force. And this force is the effect that something has on pushing the price up. So the furthest out ripple has the least amount of effect of pushing the price of retro games and gaming up. The biggest force is the stone itself. So let's start there, the stone. What is the biggest cause of pushing up retro games and game collecting prices? Well, it's me and it's you. And it's all those people that love collecting or buying games or playing games. We are the primary cause for pushing up the price of games. We want something, we go out and buy it. The more of us that want it, the more of us go out and buy it. And so there's a demand for it and the price goes up. Now, when it comes to things like retro gaming, time periods and cohorts of people are really important to this. Because as we get older, as we get more money to spend, as we get jobs and we can afford the things we couldn't afford as we were kids, we go back to the things that we wanted and we purchase those. It happens all the time in film, music, and books. You see your cartoons that you watched as a kid being re-released on box sets, movies being released, and you take your kids to them and you buy those DVDs or Blu-rays or download them from whichever service you want. The film and music industries do this a lot. They recycle the content 10, 15, 30 years on because those people still want to enjoy that kind of content and so they can resell it. And this is exactly what's happening with retro games. We're finding all these old games here that we used to have as kids and we're buying them again and playing them again. And so naturally there's a demand that's pushing up these prices. So if you and I are the stone, what's the first ripple? What's the first thing that happens after the stones hit the water? What has the next biggest effect on pushing these prices up? Well, for me, I think it's eBay. eBay is one of the most amazing tools ever to happen in private consumer selling and purchasing. It allows us to buy products and items from around the world when we could never do that before. We usually were localized just to areas around us, people around us, stores that we would go to that were in our towns or cities. We never had something where we could go and purchase something from a completely different country. And this is extremely empowering for us. We've been able to build up collections because of eBay, but it's also a curse and we'll get onto that later. Now, because eBay allows us this huge global market, suddenly everyone has a huge global market to sell to. And you can start comparing and seeing prices that other people are selling at. And so now the purchasing and selling of games is really transparent. You can see how much something's sold for. You can see how much demand there is for an item. You can see how many people are selling it. Something we never had before. So eBay has been amazing for building collections like this. But of course with that, comes the side effect that now everyone knows what everyone else wants and so they can start charging more for it. Now our next ripple after eBay are speculators. Speculators are people that purchase 
to sell on. And I'm not talking about people that are flipping games, making 10 bucks here, 20 pounds there. I'm talking about the people that are looking to manipulate markets to increase the price of a large portfolio of product. Now we see a lot of speculation happening in the graded market. This is where games get sent off, graded, put in some perspex and sent back. Now, a lot of these companies will purchase their own games back and then they'll push them onto some kind of market that they own, either an auction house or something like eBay, something that they can control and manipulate. And they manipulate this to increase the price of the market. That way they can then bring in more product at a cheaper price and then sell it at a more expensive price. So speculators manipulate the market to increase the amount of profit they can make from a market that they ultimately control. You also see this to a smaller extent where you've got private sellers or groups of shops that will sell on eBay and then purchase the game back for a more expensive price. Now they take a hit on that, but what they'll often be doing is carrying a large amount of that stock so that as everyone else starts purchasing it at the higher price, they can then bring in their stock and make a profit on that. Next on our ripples of influence, we have mass media. Now, mass media are things like TV, newspaper, magazines, uh, well-established websites for gaming like IGN or Eurogame or GameSpot. These sites have a huge amount of influence and a massive audience. And they don't just talk to retro gamers, people in the niche, people that are collecting a certain type of console or game. They talk to everyone and they talk to people that don't have any interest in gaming as well. And the mass media do a great job of not giving people correct information. They will sell headlines that people will read, that will go to websites and read the story they've got. That way they can sell advertising to you. And over the last eight to 10 years, we've seen a lot of this mass media hysteria where they're jumping in and saying that the games you've got in your attic they're worth thousands or even millions. And you've all seen those headlines. And if you read any of the articles, they don't give any actual depth or context for what's happening in retro gaming. Yes, prices are going up and some of these are really valuable, but they give the impression that all of this is valuable, that everything you have is worth a lot of money. And so what they do is they get people to then flood the market eBay because it's easy with overpriced games. Now this in general doesn't push up games too much. Something like Sonic it won't push up but when you get the really expensive games that were already quite expensive it can push it up by a lot and that's because people like you and me are desperate to get our hands on those games. Now after the mainstream press, we finally come to YouTubers and influencers. And this is a group that has a lot of little ripples inside it as well. We don't instantly go to people that make retro gaming videos, people like me or game collection videos. We don't go to them straight away. Who we actually go to first are YouTubers that run big general news sites around gaming. Almost as effective as mass media uh, mainstream media sites. These guys and girls will literally parrot the same messages that they're getting from the mass media market as well because it sells well. It gets a lot of views. They're not necessarily talking about the Mega Drive and Genesis. They're not talking about the GameCube, your N64, the Super Nintendo. They will just parrot the message as a whole. Retro gaming, game collecting, will make you a huge amount of money. This, like with mass media, with mainstream media, gets them a lot of views, makes them a lot of money. Now, we then get into the cohort of YouTubers that I sit in. Uh, and these are the niche people, the people that are talking about retro gaming, talking about game collecting. Now, in terms of the overall effect that this group of YouTubers have on pushing up the price, it's pretty minimal. 
ask any of them. Just trying to get you guys to like a video is hard enough. So influencing you to buy something for more is even harder. Within this niche of retro gaming, the first group of channels that will help contribute to pushing up the price are people that are flipping games. They're going out, purchasing games, and then reselling them as well. And this will influence prices to an extent. Often when they have a show or an episode or a video that focuses on a particularly desirable game, showing how much they purchased it for and then how much they flipped it for and eventually got for it. After this, you get the collector's videos and channels. People like me who are showing off our game collection, showing you the journey of us collecting these games. And it can be great to watch videos like this and inspire others to go and collect and build similar collections. So we feed back into that top stone, that top funnel, where you're like, brilliant, I remember that game. I remember the Mega Drive. I remember the Super Nintendo. I'm gonna go and collect for that. So we help feed back people into that top funnel. And of course, that then goes through those ripples again where it pushes up the price. After collectors, it's people that run education and informational channels. Again, this is something that my channel does a lot of. I expose people to indie developed games. I love doing that because I'm a games developer myself and I never got the chance to build an indie developed game and so I like to give people a platform. But ultimately, that will influence some of you to go and buy those games. Those games that are developed by indie developers are pretty scarce and so they become more expensive as more people learn about those games. The channels that talk about these games, that do previews, reviews, again ignite the nostalgia and shine a light on games that people used to love back in the day or games that people are interested in collecting. Again, contributing to those people going back into the top of the funnel, becoming that stone and being the people that push up the prices of games. But with several ripples removed from that main stone that hit the puddle, we're right down here. And our influence is nowhere near as big as all those other things that have come before it. And then outside that, you have everything else. Live streams, Instagram feeds, Twitter posts, all that other stuff that contributes to kind of pushing up the price, pushing up the awareness of these games and these collections. We're now starting to get to the outer edges of these ripples. These things now have a really limited amount of force, a really limited amount of influence on pushing up the prices of games. But they do exert some kind of force on the market as a whole. The first of our last ripples is stores and markets where people go and sell their games. And they push up the prices when they start selling these games at what they say are eBay prices. Now, when they say eBay prices, they look at the completed price and sell their game for it. Now, what they're doing is pushing up the overall price of that game because eBay take their surcharge and PayPal, if you've used to pay again on PayPal, they take their surcharge and often postage can be included in that. And what you find is that some of these stores and markets you go to will take all those costs that you wouldn't normally get, the person who's selling their game on eBay wouldn't get, and they bundle those into the total cost. So pushing the price of that up. Now these are very localized. They're happening in a town or a city or in an event. And so they don't really have a direct immediate impact on pushing that price up. What they do do though, is the person that's purchasing it or people that go to these events or to those stores, see the prices of those and then look to resell at those prices. So in effect, increasing the price by eBay's costs, potentially the delivery costs and the PayPal costs. And so you get that effect of pushing the price up. Next, we have territory prices affecting another territory's prices. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take an example. 
Let's take Crusader of Ascenti on the Sega Genesis, a really expensive game in the United States, one of the most expensive you can buy on the Sega Genesis. And in recent years, it's seen a drastic price increase. Now, there is a European version of the game as well called Soleil. It's exactly the same game, but it runs on PAL systems and has the usual different cover, different manual, different label sticker. But essentially, it's exactly the same game. And that game goes for a lot, lot less. However, when the prices in the United States started to rise, you also saw a gradual rise here in Europe as well. The game went from being about 60, 70 pounds up to 80, 90, 100, 120, 140. And then it peaked at around 160 with some idiots trying to sell it for 300. And a lot of that just came from a, another territory's price increase. So demand pushing the price up it then affected the demand in other territories because it got a lot of media around it. YouTubers talking about it, influencers posting about it, mainstream media broadcasting it. And of course, eBay there, making sure everyone's aware of how much it was going for. Now, the prices on that game in Europe at least have normalized. The game now goes for about 80 or 19, in fact, I managed to hold out during that huge price rise and then got my copy at a lot cheaper than it did when it was at its peak price. And lastly, for me, the final ripple, the thing that has the least effect on pushing up the prices but does have a small effect is uneducated buyers. These are often people who know nothing about the hobby. They've not seen any of the press around it. They don't go on eBay. They know nothing at all. And they will just purchase a game. Uh, and often it's people buying for other people, buying presents for collectors or buying a game for a loved one, knowing that they loved it when they were younger. They go into their purchase with no understanding of what they're buying, how much something costs, and so they will pay often the price that someone's asking for it. And if it's a bid on something like eBay or their local equivalent, then of course that pushes the whole market up again. So that's my view on YouTubers pushing up the price of retro gaming of game connecting. But of course, that's just my view. I'd love to hear what you guys think. What do you think about YouTubers? Do you think they push the price up of games? Are they their main cause for you? And if so, why? What is it about them that makes them so effective in pushing up the prices of these classic games? Now, if you enjoy videos like this, if you love collecting for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, the Sega, or just retro gaming in general, then why not consider subscribing? You can do this by clicking on a little button just below this video. We make brand new videos every single week. And so that you don't miss them, you can also click on a little bell also just below the video. Now, if you can't wait until next week, don't worry, because we've got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos for you to enjoy, two of which you can watch over here.